Hi there, my name's Steve Waller. I'm Deputy Head at a large secondary school on the North London Hertfordshire border. I'm going to share with you today um, a little bit of work we've been doing around youth violence and gang culture. First thing to say is that our students, um, for them, we represent a place of safety. They come to school, they like coming to school, they feel safe in school, they tell us. What we've not got is students rocking up, wearing colours, carrying knives and what have you. So very much um, when talking, when working on this, people's first impressions are often very much no way. You can't have an issue. We haven't got an issue in school. For us, the issue stems from the society, from the communities in which our students stem from. Hence why we've titled this area of work Beyond the Gate. For us as a school, it's very straightforward. We see our duty of care is to safeguard our students, to safeguard them from coming victims of youth violence and youth violence associated crime, and maybe for a few perpetrators. So for us, it's all about safeguarding. So what have we done? Our response here, we see schools as being ideally placed to tackle this issue. A recent Home Office review, evidence-based review of programmes um, designed to look in at gang involvement and gang prevention highlights schools as being in a key place, a key position to tackle this issue. School curriculums, skill-based programmes, school-wide climate change programmes, classroom management programmes and parent-family training programmes, all identified as effective universal early interventions, early strategies. Targeted interventions identified, school curriculum, skills-based and combined school and family programmes. I would argue, we argue here, is that schools are key, key to early, ident early identification. The challenge is developing those effective programmes, particularly effective early intervention. So our response, what have we done? We based our response very much on the public health model. Typical model here, surveillance, identification of risk, development and evaluation and implementation. We are focusing very much on tackling the cause and not necessarily punishing the response. We also recognise that schools cannot act and tackle this in isolation. They need to be part, very much part, of a multi-agency approach. Fundamental to our approach has been improved knowledge and training of our staff around these issues, training them to inform, as I've said, early identification to inform early implementation. We've also worked very proactively building relationships between our students, between our community, and also work very closely with the police. The model we've based, as I said, based around a public health approach. We've got four stages. Awareness, identification, implementation, and development. So, awareness. For us in school, what were those early warning signs? We started to see an increasing number of students becoming victims, predominantly low-level youth-on-youth crime. Mobile phone theft, bike thefts, typically. We're having weekly reports from our community about threatening, intimidating behaviour. This was happening either coming to school or going home from school. Unsurprisingly, there was a heightened anxiety for many of our students and parents. And there were a few unsubstantiated concerns about a small number of students possibly being heavily influenced by gang-related activity. As a school, we were aware of these early warnings. There was a slight delay before police started to see these. When the crime figures came out for the police, what did they see? 114% increase in robbery within the borough, 145% in youth on youth robbery right on our doorstep. So, having recognised the early warning signs for us as a school, they were stemming out of the community, the next stage for us was to build our understanding, build our understanding of the issues. Key to that was staff training and also networking. Once we've established we had a a problem, a problem stemming beyond the gate out there in our community, there was that acceptance. As a school, we made that conscious decision, we need to do something. We cannot maintain, sit back and have our heads in the sand. We were aware of the potential impacts, if you like, the community perception. We are not the school with a gang problem. We didn't want to be seen as the school with a gang problem. We are the school that is proactively supporting our students, helping them with the issues that stem from the communities in which they live. Also, establishing good practice. There's a lot of good practice out there, a lot of understanding out there. I would say perhaps with education, there's still very much a void of knowledge and a void of understanding.
identification. I would argue, when I talk about this, this is probably, in my opinion, the most important slide. It summarises here, academic research, five shared risk factors for youth violence and gang involvement. Individual, family, school, peers and community. My point is simple, schools, we have our students for over 30 hours a week. We have access to them like no other organisation. We know our students better than many of the parents from the families from which they originate. We know, as does any school, as students, as individuals, we know the families and their family dynamics. We have confidence and we know what we're doing. We know our student friends and influences and we understand the community in which we serve. That understanding, that access, that presents us perfectly, in my opinion, to identify those students who need to be considered most at risk. How do we go about that? We developed a mapping toolkit. I talked about training of our staff. All staff are aware both of factors that are likely to increase risk and also early indicators. Looking at factors such as changes in behaviour, father deficit, marginalisation, cultural deviance, we can see here the range of factors that we use. We use these to identify our accurate students. We work proactively both with the local police, the local council and TIS. This allows us to actually put targeted support in for those students who we consider most at risk, based not just on a hunch, but actually based on academic research and a shared understanding. If you like, using, I think it's approach they use up in, uh, up in Glasgow, connecting the dots. Pulling together all those little risk factors, those early identification, to actually inform the work that we do. This is part of a multi-agency approach, increasingly, we are working with a network of local schools and we've also benefited from a PCC bid. So having identified, what have we done? We developed what we called a graduated response. Universal, targeted and specialist. Universal approach, whole school approaches. We've had awareness days, for example, supported by the council and the police. Whole school assemblies. Done a lot of work we call safeguarding through the curriculum. We've looked at our curriculum particularly PSHCE. We've looked at opportunities where we can inform students about how to keep themselves safe, inform them about the realities of youth violence, inform them about the realities of gang culture, allowing them to make informed decisions. Part of this as well is also developing what we deem the counter narrative, not being influenced by social media, not being influenced by the stories, the glorification of gangs and gang life. We also have what we call our AB programme, our Aspire Beyond programme. This allows targeted work with some students who we may consider to be on the fringes, possibly at risk. These students have various group interventions tackling specific issues. And for some, some of our more high risk students, they have one-to-one -one mentoring, a long-term programme of specialist mentoring. Very much the focus here is aspiration encouraging our students to engage in education, to take control of their future and aspire, for many of them, aspire beyond the communities in which they currently reside. Whole school-wise, in terms of our programme, training has been absolutely key. Keep coming back to training. We do monitor attendance, we monitor disengagement, what we call disclosure through the curriculum. I've talked about aspiration. Part of that aspiration is career plans, very much trying to engage positivity in terms of our students and their approach and their engagement in school. We do have an increased staff presence at the end of the day. Again, safeguarding our students. This often goes just beyond the school gate as well. Potentially a slightly grey area, but for us, it's all about safeguarding our students, safeguarding our community, giving them that reassurance. We work proactively with the police. The police are welcome in school. We like them to work proactively with us. We like them to come in, to talk to our students, to share intelligence, to offer safety tips. We see the police very much as an extension of our school community. We also have an updated search policy and guidance. And increasingly now, we are working with our parents and carers to raise their awareness and share our work with them. Very much a whole school community approach. Next steps for us, probably threefold. I would argue information sharing 
needs to improve significantly. Multi-agency information sharing and information sharing between schools. We very much believe in sharing any information that keeps students safe. We are 100% committed to that and that is how we proactively work. As a school, we would like to develop our understanding of ACE, adverse child experience understanding and how that impacts on students and their behaviours. We've also been sharing our approach and our model widely across Hertfordshire. As I do, as indicated before, think there is very much a void in, school, in schools nationally and also reluctance to tackle this issue. I would argue the work we are doing is effective, it is working, it is having an impact and it is keeping students safe. I have been sharing this widely across Hearts. Interesting quote there from a local head. Perhaps that summarises quite well where a number of schools are. For many, this journey is just beginning. Happy to share any information. Anyone would like to come and visit us, feel free. Always looking to develop and share ideas. Thank you very much.